Here's an example where we can apply conservation of mass to figure out something about the flows in and out of a tank. This tank of water has three pipes. An inlet over here that's a 4-inch Schedule 40 steel pipe. An outlet over here that's a 4-inch Schedule 40 steel pipe. There's water coming in at 5 meters per second average velocity here and going out at 3 meters per second average velocity there. So a net inflow. And yet the surface of the tank is still dropping by 2 centimeters per second. So it's losing volume. And that's because there must be quite a bit of flow coming out through this 6 inch Schedule 40 pipe down here. The cross-sectional area of the tank is one square meter and the question we want to find out is what is V3 in this larger pipe? So let's figure out how we'll do this. Let's draw a control volume. I want to make sure that my control volume has boundaries that are perpendicular to the flow direction in each of these locations and I'll make the control volume boundary just above this surface here. So I can take into account the fact that this surface is dropping. So I'd like to know what is the volume or what is the velocity in the larger pipe. I'll sit down and say first off that the rate of change of the total volume in the tank with time must be equal to the differences between these three inflows and outflows. So that'll be V1, A1, that's what's coming in, that would increase the amount of volume in the tank, minus what's going out, V2, A2, and whatever's going out at 3, minus V3, A3. Now in writing this equation like this with just the volume flow rates, I'm making the assumption that density is a constant. I don't need to know what it is, I just need to know that it's a constant, that this fluid is incompressible, it's all the same density everywhere. I've got some flow coming out here at V3, but I don't know what V3 is. Now if I rearrange that, I can take V3 to the other side, I'll wind up with V3 equal to still V1, A1, whoops, everybody makes mistakes, V1, A1, minus V2, A2, the dV dt, that's the velocity at which this is going down times that area. So that'll be the velocity of the surface as it moves down times the area of the surface. And that is negative, but it's come to the other side, so it becomes positive. So let's just check that, see that it balances out. The bigger this is, the bigger V3 is going to be if I take this velocity in this sense. So I've got the sign right. So always check on these ones. This is where you're most likely to make mistakes, is getting signs like that wrong. Then dividing through by A3, that will allow me to figure out what V3 is. But I don't really know what these areas are. I've just been given pipe sizes. So I'd have to go and look up the size of these various pipes. 4 inch Schedule 40 pipe has an inside diameter of 102.26 millimeters. 6 inch Schedule 40 has an inside diameter. I got this by going on the web and looking up uh, piping tables of 154.05 millimeters. So I can get the areas are equal to pi d squared over 4 and I can put in the right areas for each of these. I know what the velocities are, the 5 and the 3 meters per second. So I'll wind up with, once I plug in the numbers, 1.95 meters per second is the outflow here at V3. So applying conservation of mass allows us to find out what the unknown is. On the other hand, had we known what V3 is, we could have told how fast the tank was either emptying or filling. So for instance, if V3 was actually uh, uh, zero, then we'd have a net increase in the volume in the tank. The tank would be filling instead of emptying. 